Hey guys, Nintendrew here, and in this video we'll be talking about Nintendo's Forgotten Child, the system they so desperately try to ignore. That's right, the Virtual Boy. I'm sure most of you know at least a little bit about this oddball system, but did you know that only 14 titles were released for this console in North America? Quite literally, you could hold the entire US cartridge set in the palm of your hand, and this smaller lineup makes the Virtual Boy a very attractive console for collectors looking to compile a complete library. Case in point, uh, here is my complete US Virtual Boy library. Uh, I just finished this collection a couple weeks ago, and today we'll be playing through each and every one of these titles. The good, the bad, and yes, the ugly. <laughs> but stick around and you just might see a gem or two along the way. So without further ado, let's check it out. Alright, first, some history. The Virtual Boy was launched in North America in August of 1995 and was discontinued just seven months later in March of 96. In Japan, the system saw an even shorter shelf life, just five months before the plug was pulled. As for Europe, the system never even saw the light of day. Despite the system's bulky and heavy build, Nintendo actually marketed this as a portable game system and included a battery pack for on-the-go play. The lack of true portability was one of the biggest criticisms along with a high price point, monochromatic red display, and health concerns regarding headaches and nausea. Remember how the 3DS initially saw some public concern about eye strain? Imagine that times 10, the response was not great. As I mentioned before, the system's early recall meant that only 14 titles made their way to North America, but even worldwide, the complete library is puny. Only eight more titles were published exclusively in Japan, bringing the system's game count up to a whopping 22 titles. All right, so let's get into those titles. Like I mentioned, there are 14 games which made their way stateside, and I'll be covering them in order of their release. So first up is Mario's Tennis. Although these first four titles were all available on day one, I decided to mention Mario's Tennis first because, of course, it was the pack-in title, which was available with every Virtual Boy system sold in the US. Although your first memory of Mario Tennis might be the Nintendo 64 entry, the series actually got its start here five years earlier. One of the biggest complaints from critics was the lack of a multiplayer mode. Although a two-player mode was in development, the Virtual Boy Link cable which would have made this connection possible was never finished due to poor system sales. The game features seven playable characters, including Toad, Koopa, and Donkey Kong Jr., but interestingly, this is the only game in the series to leave out Waluigi, Donkey Kong, and Bowser. Overall, Mario's Tennis feels a bit like a polished tech demo, but compared to the other games on this list, it's very easy to find for cheap, and would be a great place to start if you're looking to collect for the platform. Next up is Galactic Pinball. Welcome to Space World. Let's go. As the name might suggest, this one is a pinball game with four playable tables, each of which fit the galactic theme. The Virtual Boy's 3D effect was used in this title to give a sense of depth as the player's puck travels away and toward the bottom of the playfield. Critics seemed to be a bit mixed about this one. Some praised the game for its unintrusive use of 3D, while others felt it was a bit unimaginative or underutilized. Personally, I am terrible at pinball games, but to me this seems like a reasonably faithful pinball game, and at the very least it can be a fun time waster. And hey, it even has a small Samus cameo, a little bit of fan service there. Although it does feel like this one could have done just as well on any other system without the limit of the red and black visuals. Next is Red Alarm. Good luck. This is actually the first title I ever played for Virtual Boy because it was included with the system when I bought it secondhand as a kid. Many players have drawn a parallel between this title and the Star Fox series, which makes sense as this title is said to have been inspired by the original Super Nintendo entry. Unlike many other Virtual Boy titles which achieved their 3D effect through parallaxing 2D sprites, Red Alarm used wireframe polygonal 3D rendering to build a true 3D on-rails experience within the console's limitations. This wireframe look might take some getting used to, but the gameplay itself is very solid and has provided me with tons of entertainment on top of great replay value. Definitely one of my favorite titles on Virtual Boy. And finally, the last launch title was Tellero Boxer. Again, there might be some earlier inspirations here coming through. Tellero Boxer certainly feels like a spiritual successor to Punch Out, but what really sets this title apart is the first person perspective. Combined with the stereoscopic 3D effect, Tellero Boxer makes great use of the console's hardware, possibly more so than any of the other titles on the platform. As far as gameplay is concerned, this one is pretty difficult to master, but it certainly stands out as one of the better games for Virtual Boy. As with Mario's Tennis, this game is pretty easy to come by, so it's a great choice for new collectors. Number 5 is Virtual League Baseball. 
This title was published by Kimco, who were known for the Top Gear racing series on Super Nintendo. Kimco had actually planned to release a sequel to this title, but it was cancelled for pretty obvious reasons. Another title lost due to poor console sales. There's not a whole lot I can say about this title, you know, it's, it's a baseball game. What you see is what you get. If you like that sort of thing, maybe check this one out. After that came Mario Clash. This game is definitely one of the coolest and most unique new experiences for the Virtual Boy. As you might gather from the game's art and design, it was based on the original Mario Bros. arcade title with one big twist. Taking advantage of the system's 3D capabilities, Mario can toss Koopa shells from the foreground to the background and vice versa to take out enemies. Although the game saw mixed reviews on launch, the community has looked back on Mario Clash fondly, and personally I have to recommend it to any and all Virtual Boy owners. It may not have aged super well, but it's an entertaining little title, and if you're going to pick up a new game for the system, you could do much worse. Next up is Jack Brothers. This one is currently the rarest and most sought after title for the platform, and at the time of this video can fetch prices upwards of $300. Oddly enough, this game is a spin-off title from Atlas's Megami Tensei series, and was the first entry from that series to make its way outside of Japan. Jack Brothers is a top-down action title in which the player takes on the role of one of three characters from an alternate world visiting our world on the night of Halloween and must make their way back home before the portal connecting the two closes. A relatively low production run plus engaging gameplay have made this title a prized collector's item. If you see this one out in the wild for a good price, don't hesitate to pick it up. Jack Brothers is definitely one of the most interesting and engaging titles for the console with a great soundtrack to boot. Highly recommended. Coming in at number 8 is Golf. Much like Virtual League Baseball, there's not a whole lot to say about this one. It's your typical golf game, with the additional gimmick of stereoscopic 3D. The game includes two modes. Uh, the first is a tournament mode where you face off in brackets against AI opponents, and the second is stroke mode, which is an arcade-style challenge to reach your place on the high score list. Critics gave golf for Virtual Boy generally positive reviews, and noted that the physics felt pretty solid and could stand up to other golf sims of the era. At the end of the day, it's not really much to write home about, but if you're a fan of titles like this, it might be up your alley. Next is Virtual Boy Wario Land. I'm very excited to have reached this game on the list. Virtual Boy Wario Land is one of those rare instances of a truly exceptional title on this ill-fated machine. The game is the second entry in the Wario Land series, coming directly after Super Mario Land 3, and this title took advantage of the Virtual Boy's hardware by allowing Wario to travel back and forth between the foreground and background layers of his environment. This mechanic would go on to inspire the development of Mutant Muds, a hit indie title which further explored the foreground-background hopping ability. Much like the original title, Virtual Boy Wario Land sees Wario swapping between different hats which unlock new abilities, such as a ground pound and a flamethrower attack. If you were to get just one Virtual Boy game, this is the one I'd recommend. A great title and affordable as well. After that came Panic Bomber. Much like Mario's Tennis, this Bomberman spinoff was intended to have a head-to-head -head multiplayer mode, but the mode was canned due to the cancellation of the Virtual Boy Link cable. If you're unfamiliar with the series, Panic Bomber is a puzzle game in the vein of titles like Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine and Dr. Mario, but this entry suffers a bit from the Virtual Boy's monochrome display due to the lack of distinguishing colors between matching pieces. Add to that the fact that the game doesn't really make great use of the system's 3D, and you're left with a title which really could have been better on a different platform. But nonetheless, it fills a certain void in the Virtual Boy library, and with such a small set of games, the console needed every break it could get. Next up is Vertical Force. Speaking of filling genres, Vertical Force is a top-down scrolling shooter with a 3D twist. Much like Wario Land, this title used separate foreground and background layers to shake up the gameplay. So by swapping layers, you can strategically avoid enemies or collect power-ups between the two. There are three power-ups, which are a shield, a wide shot, and a laser shot, and the game consists of four full levels each capped off with a boss fight leading into the next. Other than the 3D layer swap mechanic, this game doesn't push too many boundaries, and the whole thing can be beaten in a matter of 20 minutes or so. But as far as shoot 'em ups go, Vertical Force is an entertaining little arcade style romp. At number 12 is Waterworld. So, this game was a movie tie in for the 1995 Kevin Costner film of the same name. Unfortunately, as is often the case with games based on movies, it's generally agreed that Waterworld was a poor cash grab and one of the worst titles on the platform. Even outside of the Virtual Boy, where Waterworld saw release on SNES as well as unreleased ports for Sega Genesis and Sega Saturn, 
This version is considered the worst of the bunch due to poor gameplay, graphics, and just unimpressive 3D effects. Perhaps the most interesting thing about Waterworld is that it supports up to 9 players alternating in a multiplayer high score challenge mode, but I have serious doubts that anyone has ever had success convincing 8 of their friends to join them for a Waterworld session. If you're not looking to complete the Virtual Boy library, I'd suggest you make a hard pass on this title, especially given that the market value of this game has stayed consistently pricey due to poor initial sales. Alright, just two titles left. Next up is Nestor's Funky Bowling. This title is, appropriately enough, a bowling game featuring Nestor, the character most well known for his role in a long-running comic strip for Nintendo Power Magazine. Players compete as Nestor, or his twin sister Hester, in one of three modes which each support one to two players. Personally, I think this game is neat just as a point of history, seeing as, to my knowledge, it's the only game which featured Nestor as the main character. In regards to gameplay, it's a pretty average run-of-the-mill bowling title, but the collector in me loves the idea of giving a potentially more obscure Nintendo character his own titular role, so I have a certain fondness for this one. Nestor's Funky Bowling isn't the cheapest Virtual Boy game, but it's still relatively affordable and you should definitely pick it up if you find a good deal. And finally, the last title released for Virtual Boy was 3D Tetris. I don't know about you guys, but when I think about Tetris, I don't usually think of it as a groundbreaking series. Usually they stay pretty safe and rehash the same basic mechanic. But 3D Tetris marks a very unique departure from the typical Tetris experience. Similar to Red Alarm, this game uses 3D wireframe models to represent Tetris pieces and has you drop them into a sort of well, away from the player's perspective. Unlike many of the games on this list, 3D Tetris had a battery backup within the cartridge to allow players to save high scores and names on the built-in leaderboard. You might think this sort of thing was standard in the mid-90s, but many Virtual Boy titles lacked that save functionality and opted to just reset all high scores when shutting down the system. Reviews were a pretty mixed bag for this one, but at the very least you've got to give the devs some credit that they did try to do something new with the opportunity of the Virtual Boy hardware. Alright guys, that does it for this video. As you can see, the Virtual Boy has a pretty eclectic group of titles within its tiny library, but despite this console's issues, it has been a blast to collect for, and I hope you learned something along the way. If you did, please consider subscribing to Nintendo for all sorts of cool gaming content, and make sure to share the video with any friends who might find it interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey guys, thanks again for checking out the video and for making it all the way to the end. Hope you enjoyed. As always, I've got links to all my social media in the description below if you'd like to join our Discord or follow on Twitter, Facebook, that sort of thing. And of course, I've got a link to my Patreon on the right side of your screen if you'd like to support the channel even more. So thank you so much for your viewership, and I'll see you next time. Take care.